a lost white race in America? Is there any archaeological evidence? Let's unearth the truth. Canava Valley, occupied by a fierce race of white warriors. According to the Shawnee Indians, deny building the mounds and earthworks. Well, that's quite a mouthful and I have really no idea why Kiara Knightley's character from the 2004 movie King Arthur has to do with any of this, really. This, to be generous, article is a copy and paste article from a book called History of Fayette County, West Virginia, published in 1926. And this is from a chapter written by Captain William Page, who claimed to have spoken with an old man. It's a bit unspecified, but this man, in turn, claimed to have, as a young boy, spoken with a medicine man from the Native American tribes in the area, who told him that these Native Americans did not build the mounds in the area and that the area was originally settled by a tribe of white fierce warriors. But we're never given the name of the tribe and Captain Page then just go on describing some skeletons that claim to have been found and then apply the racial sciences of the time on them, claiming that these skeletons show signs of being white Europeans and connecting these burials with a mound in the area. Since pictures of these remains um, is not shown in the books or really specified where they are located now, it's hard to go into further detail here, but this is the extent of evidence that are offered by Captain Page and the author of this book and this blog post that we saw recently. But it's worth mentioning that this story is not found anywhere else, not even in earlier or later works about the area. And one earlier work that maybe should have mentioned it, if this was a true account, is uh, The History of Canava Valley that was published in 1891. But the claim that um, a lost white race or giants or the mound builder myth uh, built these mounds are far from a new idea. This argument developed almost immediately after the earthworks of North America was discovered, but the hypothesis really exploded during the 19th century. Professor Ken Fader has identified five core arguments for the myth about this uh, lost white race or the mound builder myth. Firstly, it was believed that the Native Americans were I'm using the language of the 1800s here, too primitive and lazy for doing this type of construction and um, doing agriculture and those things. A view that was quite common during this era, even among scholars and even J.W. Foster from the Chicago Academy of Science held this belief quite publicly in his speeches. However, this was pushed back against already during the 1890s and today we know that several Native American tribes practice a sedimentary living and agriculture way before the European colonization. And the second argument was that the mounds are far older than the earliest evidence of Native American culture. It was believed that the indigenous people of America arrived much, much later. But today we know that the ancestors of the Native American and the indigenous people of America arrived in America quite early in human history. The third argument is that supposedly stone tablets with writing upon them was found within the mounds when excavated. And the issue with this statement is, as Professor Fader points out, that it was only the proponents of the mound builder myth that mystically found these tablets. And over a century later of excavation, science, research, no other tablets have been found. Looking at the tablets today in their context and how they were produced, it's quite evident that these are quite recent hoaxes. The fourth argument is that the Native Americans themselves claim that they did not build the mounds and the earthwork. The claim only works if you ignore, well, 
most of uh, the accounts about this. Even the explorers in the 1600s described how the indigenous people they met built these tall, large platforms or mounds during the time they were within the areas, creating a connection between the past and present mound builders. So again, even back then, this argument didn't really make sense. And the fifth and last argument that uh, Fader point out is that the mound builder theorists usually claim that metals like iron or steel were found within the mounds. And as you might suspect by now, this is again not what the archaeological record show. The only metal found within the mounds are at best native copper. And it's a easily obtained and worked metal. Native copper you can basically find raw in the nature as if and start working it by cold hammering. Something I go into further detail about in a full length article called Aliens and Heavy Metallurgy. Now, these claims about a lost white race or giant have for a long time been used to take lands and rights from the indigenous people in America. The idea is that if the Native America took the land from white European pre-Columbian settlers, then the land is really belonging to the white colonies that uh, live here currently. And this lost white race hypothesis or idea is still being presented today as a real event, something that has some sort of science behind it by authors like um, Thor Heyerdahl, David Childress, um, Von Daniken, and of course Graham Hancock. And this creates a bit of an issue and tension for the tribes that are trying to reclaim their past from these, well, pseudo-scientific ideas. For example, the Shawnee that we saw in the beginning recently have been allowed to reclaim the Serpent Mound. And these have not been incident-free. There's been uh, examples of lectures by the um, chiefs of the tribe being interrupted at the site. We have uh, vandalism, we have uh, disturbance by new agers and plastic shamans. Well, people like Graham Hancock who claim that these earthworks and mounds are the work of white Atlanteans are harmful to these communities since they rob them of their heritage. And I think that it's important that we look at these ideas as for what they are, racist and highly problematic and most important pseudo-scientific. They have no foundation in the archaeological record, in the current understanding of our history, and they don't offer any evidence except for anecdotal cherry-picked data that themselves have selected from often works that's been out of relevancy for nearly a century, in some cases even more. And if you want to learn more about the mound builder myth, how it came about, how it developed and how it's presented today, I highly recommend Jason Colavito's book, The Mound Builder Myth, Fake History and the Hunt for the Lost White Race. There you can get a lot more information about what the things I just talked about, but this is a primer and I have in the past written quite extensively about these ideas myself, so feel free to check that out too.